Matias Correa, and I'm a designer. My background is classic, trained in graphic design. I did editorial, typography, branding, um, all the way till I moved to New York City, where while starting Behance, I have to dive deep into the digital side of design, and um, I spent almost 13 years since then doing digital design. I think my background as a graphic designer helped me sort of develop the design thinking, problem solving, which in the end design is problem solving. And I think that's what I apply into every day, either thinking about a team structure or team, how to solve a specific problem, uh, interaction design problem, UX design problem in a product, or how to design a process for a team. I think they're all the same. They come from the same place, which is, you know, my training as a designer um, and the expertise that you develop over time um, with developing also complex systems like, you know, a network like Behance or, or, or software that, that I've done in the past. No, not really. I, I didn't... Had, I, I never had the necessity or the opportunity to actually uh, start a business and, you know, even starting my hands was sort of something that came as a, uh, as a coincidence, not, not something I was at the moment uh, searching to do. So, no, I was pretty, pretty green. So, you know, my hands was a very demanding, very challenging um, endeavor, but it was also very rewarding. Um, I learned a lot. It was a constant growth. We were also young, so there was a lot of, you know, uh, a process of maturity as well as a person and as a designer and as a manager. Um, but at the same time, after, you know, the acquisition and uh, I, I wanted to take time to, to be able to think because the, the grind of a startup, a tech startup, is, is very demanding. So you have very little time to sort of rethink. You're always sort of moving forward. So I wanted to take that step back to be able to look back and be able to move forward. And I just wanted to, uh, I felt I needed to do other things and learn other skills. And, and I wanted to fulfill a dream that I had, which was taking my motorcycle uh, on a very long Trip and I took my motorcycle from Brooklyn to Ushuaia, the south of South America, and that ended uh, early last year, um, 2017. And now I'm also writing a book about it. So, well, right now after everything that I learned at Behance, I wanted to continue to use the skills and the knowledge that I gained from, from that venture. And I am working with uh, startup teams um, on all different fields to help them solve their design problems, either redesigning products, designing new uh, services and products um, that don't exist yet, or thinking through their design process, their teams, how to structure a design practice within an organization. So as always, trying to help startup teams um, through design thinking. And I think that's what right now what I'm putting the most work in, obviously working on motorcycles and I'm working on my book. It's always about making, you know, making things, um, making things for me. In the last decade, I've been focusing a lot on working on motorcycles because there's an abstract aspect of how things work. But at the same time, there's a mechanical element to it. So these two parts of my brain sort of want to work together all the time. And I feel like design uh, and digital design in many ways is also um, touching both of those abstract and sort of mechanical aspect of design. So, um, you know, it's something that it doesn't end. Um, there's no moment where you have learned everything. So I feel like pick this up for the rest of my life, you know, for the decades to come. So.
Yeah, I think that once you find something that moves you to see it through, when you find something that excites you to solve as a problem, I think time, uh, it's time well spent. And I would, um, I think that right now I just have to find what it is. So that's why I'm helping all the teams uh, through their journeys and with their um, businesses. But yeah, it was, it was very rewarding. So I would do it again, definitely. I think the value of time, you know, time is limited and how I spend my time with whom and doing what is much more important than it's ever been to me. The idea that I have to make the best of it um, and I want to continue to having an interesting life. So what do I put my energy in? I think after the trip I realized that you know, I have to keep pushing to do the things that I want to achieve in life. Um, and some of those are not very traditional, you know. And I think that has changed the way I see my career, if you will, my, my work. You know, I think that for me there has to be a balance between uh, the grind, the work, and also spending time doing things that are just for me and they sort of fill up a part of my, of my being that, uh, you know, has to do less with um, earning a living and more with learning and, um, and knowledge and knowledge that is not so much uh, the one that you learn in the books, but it's knowledge about how things work and how this world works and understanding, you know, society and humanity and, um, you know, why we're here. My priorities now are making sure that every time I pick a project that it relates to something I want to learn, that I work with people that I like, that people that can teach me and that I can teach that are ready to give and take and um, I don't want to fight through through projects. I don't want to have to argue. I want to work with people who are you know in the same wavelength. I think that's a priority and also balancing work and fun exploration. Um, for me motorcycles, riding them, working on them, restoring them, it's a priority because it really touches a part of my brain that makes me feel like myself. It's definitely intriguing. I have no idea what is going to happen in 10 years. I think some of these technologies that we've mentioned are still a little too young. I think in 10 years we've see, we will see some development in them. Um, I actually want to think more about 20 years from now. I'm not sure. I know that AI will be far, farther along, but I still AI will take a few more decades to actually become what we see it. Um, you know, what we see in our mind's eye, what we see it, be, what, what it needs to be. Um, I, I think a lot about the dependencies we're creating to this technology, to devices, to having to be connected. As a person who was born in the 70s, I feel that there are many benefits to it, but there are some drawbacks. And I'm a big, you know, I'm sort of like an analog technologist. I love things that are not connected to the internet or to a, a network, but at the same time, I love building things for it. So it's a strange point, you know, place to be. Um, it is, it is, uh, there's a lot to come, um, but I'm not a clairvoyant, so I don't know what it's going to be.